Good evening, you guys. Um, this is Naeem Shakum, also known as Jude, the pretty coach atop in this heiress here. Um, I am talking low because my voice, um, my goiter is, has been irritating me. And so also my baby is asleep. I hope that you'll be able to hear me. Yeah, I hope you'll be able to hear me. So I'm going to hop into this reading. This is a general reading for today. So the first way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to read like the elements. All these cards right here that are going to be influencing the overall reading. Okay. So of course I ask for the information to be accurate for our highest good and the highest good of all connect to us. So here we go. The overall energy that we have starting off with a lot of the elements that will be affecting this reading and the messages coming out in it, the overall energy is the moon. And I'm going to read from the booklet, but before I do, I want to go ahead and kind of come off of memory. Okay. I know that the moon deals with the feminine energy. It deals with the female woman, um, the mother type of energy. It deals with nurturing energy, psychic abilities, um, manifestation, and spirituality. All right, so let's get the, out of the book. It says, the moon shows us the regularity of cycles and teaches about the importance of change. As it moves through its cycles each month, it governs emotions, instincts, and intuition, as well as memory and imagination. Issues around maternal figures, traditions, and even adaptability can also be represented by the moon card. All right, so that's first. Now, um, the first card here, as far as like the planet, the planetary energies that are going to be coloring this reading, we have the card of Uranus. <clears throat> oh no, I feel like I'm trying to get sick. Oh, I can feel it. All right. Let me hold this back up for you guys. So the Uranus card, it says, um, well, first let me tell y'all what I heard when I was getting all these cards. So for Uranus, I know that it can deal with exposure and shocking information and insight and changes. So um, there could be some innovative or um, upsets in some way, shocks that could be being revealed at this time. I know that currently Uranus, as far as I know, is in Taurus, um, which <sighs> my baby is up. Anyway, Uranus, here we go. This is what it says. Uranus is associated with the primal, it's associated with powerful human needs, such as the desire for freedom and individuality. It says, as well as a push towards a larger vision and humanitarian service, big thoughts, big insights, and big changes are, rep are represented by Uranus. Let me get my baby. Hey, mama. Mommy. The next card that's here is Neptune, and I'm about to get it too. Come here. You don't have to do that. I'm about to get you. Come here, baby girl. Oh, mommy, you look like you were sleeping real good. All right. Okay. No, we are. All right, let's read the Neptune card here. 
You're so sweet. You're so cute. All right. So Neptune deals with psychic abilities as well. It can deal with illusions. It can deal with glamour and beauty as well sometimes. Um, I also want to say the signs associated with these cards. So Cancer is connected to the moon. Uranus is connected to the sign of... Cover your mouth, mom. Uranus is connected to um, Aquarius, most notably. All right. So, yeah. Mars here is connected to Aries and Scorpio. Daria. That is you. That is Daria. All right. So, um, here we go. Pisces. I mean, Neptune. <laughs> Hold on, baby. All right. My booklet tore up. I've been having it for a few years. Yes. Hold on. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Daria. I'll get it. No, I got it. Okay. I got it. Thank you, baby. All right. Neptune is associated. Um. Oh, you're so cute. It governs human, human drives such as imagination, compassion, and psychic experiences. Bundled with these ideas are also issues of sacrifice and obligation. And balancing between giving and resentment can feature large with this card. Yeah, the element of sacrifice is heavy with the sign of Pisces, okay? Another thing that's connected to Pisces can sometimes be sickness or ailments and also restrictions of all kinds. So also um, prison or jail time or hospitals. All right, moving on. The last and final card is Mars, so I got to get that. Yeah. All right. So Mars, I know, can deal with war. Mars can deal with war. It can deal with our passions um, and the way that we express the things that we're passionate about. It can also deal with arguments and... Um, <clears throat> I don't know why I'm hearing ego, but our it could deal with aggression, like the way that we show what we want, like how we show also our power and things of that nature. It can deal with power struggles, things like that. Let's go ahead and get it from the book. Mars, um, hold on, represents some very powerful drives, it, such as competitiveness, assertiveness, and aggression. Issues around courage, confidence, passion, and strength are also part of Mars's domain. And I also feel like sex, uh, you know, sexual energy is connected to that as well. All right, so let's get the elements. So when I pulled from this same deck, the elements that will be surrounding this, I got water, which for me, we know that water deals with spirituality and it can deal with our emotions and feelings. Fire deals with actions and our power to create. And the earth and earth energy deals with um, the concrete things, uh, the evidence of what's going on in our spirits and our feelings and our actions. It's like what comes from that, the manifestation of those two things. So, just so this won't be super long. No, I'm going to go ahead and read. Okay, hold on. I was going to skip over it, but I don't want to. I'm going to go ahead and read it. All right, so for water, it says, flowing, cleansing, and healing. The energy of water refreshes and moves gently. Spiritual renewal, forgiveness, the need to connect, the need to connect to, wait a minute, to understand and be understood, intimacy and creative expression. Okay. Ride the current of water. It can wash away the, deb the debris of life, making everything feel fresh and new. And bring the quality of water. So it's saying bring the quality of water to a situation by opening your heart, speaking the truth with kindness and compassion, encouraging connections, expressing forgiveness, 
and healing whenever and whatever you can. Fire. It says powerful, focused, and intense. The energy of fire burns brightly and moves quickly. Passion, drive, the desire to create. Strong and sometimes scary emotions like anger are fueled by fire. It both destroys and purifies, which seems in opposition to the desire to create, but really it's all a part of the creative process. Bring the quality of fire to a situation by taking action and doing what needs to be done. Being courageous by saying or doing the scary but essential thing that needs expression. Being focused and determined to see something through to the end or honoring and following your passion. And last but not least, we've got Earth, so let's go there. <clears throat> Mommy, I'm going to give you milk. Huh? Some milk. Okay. Okay. With Earth, here's the last one for this. It says stable, secure, and abundant. The energy of Earth nurtures life and promotes long, leisurely pleasures. The things we need, the things we want, and the material and temporal things we value are expressed here. The acquiring and distribution of resources is at the center of Earth energy. So bring the quality of Earth to a situation through generosity of your material goods, resources, and time. The Earth is slow and sure, so take an unhurried, calm approach and avoid sudden or unexpected actions. Create a calm place in the center of chaotic energy. Oh no, I'll have to put that back in order. Uh oh, I'm dropping cards. All right, so we're about to, let me go get your bottle because I need to focus. What? No, you can't have your today, Pookie. Mommy is doing a reading. Oh, bitty. Bitty baby. All right. Step up here first. I remember, or was it in the upright? Uh, excuse me, I think they were both in the reverse. Okay. You want some milk? From your bow, your bow, <laughs> girl. Come on here. Let's go get your bottle, okay? Yeah. And then when mommy get done with the reading, she'll give you to take if you still want some. Let's go. Oh, okay. So we're reverting. We're just you're just showing mommy that you know what you're doing, huh? You know how to crawl, Ooh, mommy girl. Right. All right, let's get into it. So the next deck of cards that I used is called um, African Goddess Rising, and it's a beautiful deck recommended by a sister friend of mine. So hopping into the overall energy first, I apologize. Let's get it. Um, it's the number 43, and it says Harvest. So innately, it makes me feel like some things it's giving karma to me for some reason too but it makes me feel like basically the seeds that have been planted um whether it was by us or by even our ancestors for a time such as this is coming forth for some of us this could be on an individual level or on a collective level okay so let's go ahead and look up what it says in the book that was what the number <laughs> what was the number 43? Is that right here? What the heck is that on my baby cup? Okay, I don't know. 43. <laughs> if you want it, get it. Get it. Yeah. All right, here's what it says here. 
So it says Abel Abel Nimba, the goddess of harvest. Mm -hmm. The element is water that she's connected to. The temple is high priestesses. Her um, guidance says this, give thanks because you are being blessed. It is harvest time. Pray attention. A season of great harvest is a season of great epiphanies. You are prospering. The embodiment says this, Harvest is when you reap the blessings that you have sown. The harvest is not just the fulfillment of your dreams, but the creation of them. Your thoughts, your imagination, the blessing of you being here another day on this earth. That is all harvest. Yeah, baby. No candy. But not right now. You'll get some because you definitely ate your food. We are always prospering. That is her embodiment so the next card that came out um is this one right here and it is the number two in this particular deck let me let you guys see that this is the sun and the moon here and in it it's reflected a male and a female which is the godhead and i feel like it's you know Reflecting the divine masculine and feminine. All right. And so that is the number two. Some of you guys could literally be seeing two, two, two. Let's get it. I'm going to go straight to the book. Yes. All right. Here's what it says. The element is air. This can represent a god or not. Um. Yes, you. Yes, you. God or a goddess of cosmic power. Uh uh, mommy, 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 mommy. Let me finish my reading, okay? All right, I'm gonna finish it. All right, it says you are in the right place because, I mean, it says you are in the right place. So release the fear of your power. You are sacred, you are magic. And now that you know this, you can no longer pretend not to be. So the embodiment says, rise up into your magnificence. Love and accept yourself fully to unlock everything that you see. Stop pretending to be less than what you are. Your real power has nothing to do with external gain. Cosmic power cannot be destroyed or lost. You were created by the same force that birthed, that birthed the sun and the moon. Goddess Declaration says, my power shines forth from within. All right. Um, the next card. Here it is. It says, but I don't know if I'm going to say this right. Bokomus, Bokomus, and Bokus. Yeah. Imbokomu's guidance says this. It's the temple of the lovers. And it says, um, who do you need to forgive? Let it go and reclaim yourself. Forgiveness is a gift of freedom for you and from you. Here's the embodiment. You can't rush forgiveness. You have to feel it to heal. You have to feel it to heal it. Feel the pain, hurt, grief rage and despair take time with your heart forgiveness is a higher vibration frequency than the pain you must allow yourself to feel unforgiveness colors your world with lack mistrust and resentment you start to see everything through victim colored glasses but forgiveness does not have to include reconciliation start with self-forgiveness and say it out loud that i forgive myself with love the goddess declaration says this, I forgive and free myself and I forgive and free others. The last card here <laughs> is this one. And it is pronounced, I think, Ayazan. Ayazan, and it says, it's the temple of high priestesses and the element is also the bush. It says, you are a magnet for miracles. You are a miracle. 
And what if you truly allowed yourself to believe? All things are possible. Dare to dream bigger. Hold on, my love. Embodiment says this. You claim that you want miracles, but you take... Okay, mommy. You claim that you want miracles, but you take an I'll believe it when I see it approach. What if you will see it after you believe it? Okay. Believe that you deserve to be, do, and have the world that you want for yourself. You can be your true self. Do what awakens your soul and have your desire. This is life's miracle. And if you haven't witnessed your miracle yet today, ask for it and allow it in. My life is full of miracles. Mom, stop playing with it. If you're not going to get on it, don't play with that. No. No. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, so that's the end of that one. So first of all, I just want to go ahead and say there's a lot that I feel is happening in this so far. So, so far, I feel like, stop. So far, I basically feel that there's a lot of soul searching and things that someone or the collective has to do at this time about what it is that they want and, you know, maybe what's been in the way of that, whether it's, ooh, excuse you, whether, whether it's something that they haven't, <sighs> whether they haven't let something or someone go and it's been kind of following them with all the cycles, which they've been repeating a cycle. Someone's been, we've been repeating cycles and I have to say we, because I'm in this, this is my, this is my stuff for sure. Okay. So now we're being called to the table, called to the carpet, um, to, to figure some things out. So the first person that we have to forgive is ourselves in some instances and for others, we are having to offer forgiveness to someone else, okay? Um, take it, take what resonates for you. Also, some of us are trying to manifest something, and it's not even about trying. Like, I think that we're very, very close to the manifestation, but there are a few things that we, there are like loose ends that we need to tie up. All right, and part of that is forgiving ourselves. Like, if you made, if you realizing that you uh, made a choice from. <laughs> <laughs> if we realize that we that we made a mistake I understand that you have something that you want to say Okay. So I feel as though um Mommy, do you want me to go and let you watch something with Baby Shark? Yes. Okay, hold on. Okay, hold on. Let's go watch it. Let's go let you watch it, okay? I'll be right back, you guys. All right, guys, so I am back. <clears throat> I don't really remember exactly what I was saying before I left, but I do feel like it was something along the lines of some of us are right at the, we're right at our manifestations, but there are some loose ends that we have to tie up. Okay, some of that is requiring us to forgive ourselves for decisions that we've made that we may feel bound to, but um, we are not. And um we have to sit with whatever we are feeling and sit with whatever um like i feel like some people may feel like they're going to be losing something or someone with the connections that they have to make or rather sorry the decisions that they have to make but the connections as well um connecting to source you know you may feel that there is something that you're going to have to release and let go of. And that might be very painful right now um, for numerous reasons, okay? But it's something that 
we have to deal with and we have to face it, these things. For some people, you could really be getting told not to make certain decisions that could be kind of shocking and upsetting. But for others, it is something that you have to do. You have to make this choice and it will, you know, rock some boats and cause some shaking and tumult. But I mean, it's going to be doing it for your life as well as, you know, whomever else is connected to you for the highest good. And I feel like it's, the, the shaking is to rid illusions, to rid things that are, that are glamorous, that are, that are not real. Um, that are smoke and mirrors and stuff like that. Okay. That is deceitful. All right. So, and some of us are going to have to show courage and assertiveness during this time. All right. Let's go on and hit in, get into this tarot really quickly. We have the sun card at the bottom of the deck. So this gave me such a beautiful feeling when I pulled these cards earlier this rising. The sun was actually shining really pretty and really brightly. And it's a Sunday, you know, so heavy on this Sunday energy, but especially connected to clarity. I felt a lot of things about being made clear. Um, I also feel as though something connected to the sign of Leo. The sun is, I mean, the moon is currently in Leo. All right. And we do have the sun and the moon showing up here, but I feel like this could also be a, that energy of courage, that energy of confidence of being able to be decisive. For some of us, we could have been in an energy of indecisiveness. Um, and when I say indecisiveness, I even mean some of us may have literally chosen to not make a choice because, you know, weighing through the pros and cons or going back and forth in our minds about, you know, maybe the reasons why it would be best that we release a person, place, thing, or idea, or why we should hold on to it has been overwhelming for us for whatever the reasons it's been overwhelming. And so we don't want to make the choice. We don't want to have to be the person to make this decision. For some people, if it's in matters of love, some of us do not want to be the, the villain or we don't want to hurt a person um, because it's not something that we feel that we want to do, okay? Um, and so we don't want to have that on our conscience. We don't want to be hurtful or malicious. But... I do think that if we're hurting ourselves for the sake of, you know, trying to appease someone else who may not even be happy as well, like, we don't know, you know, the other person I feel could somehow be relieved as well, even if they don't know right away or if they don't feel as though they'll be relieved, they could very well be relieved, okay? And the truth has to be spoken and not only spoken, for some people, it doesn't even have to be about speaking the truth. It needs to be about standing on it, like making a choice and standing on that decision. I kind of feel like the moment from what I was seeing, it's like the moment some of us make this decision that I feel spirit has uh, been dropping into our feelings, into our emotions over and over again, honestly, the moment that we finally trust those and go with what our intuition is telling us to do, which for some people, it is in fact letting go of something or someone or some idea. It's letting go and releasing it. All right. Um, the moment that we do that, it's almost like spirit is just waiting for us to do that so they can give us um, the confidence and the courage and even the strategy on how to acquire these things that we're manifesting. And that's if we don't already have it. Like one of the cards in the African Goddess Rising deck was literally saying that just living every day is a miracle in and of itself. You know, surviving a birthday, you know, making it to another year, all of that, 
is harvest time. It's not just something that we can acquire that is outside of us. Although those are manifestations too. All right, let's get into the tarot. So the sun is about clarity to me. It's about healing. It is also about success. It's about success, okay? I feel like for some of us, because at the bottom of the deck, I saw the queen of swords here and I saw the seven of wands. I feel like some of us need to cut off something that we know is not, is not um, maybe serving us or we, we, we may not be serving another person. And there's someone who's on the defensive. There's someone who's very guarded. This could be both parties in this in a connection, a relationship, because I do see a male and a female here. But, you know, I feel like there is some guarded energy here. Somebody's been holding off, I think, on making this decision that they know really they should be making, okay? Um, but it's like as soon as we make this decision to cut off what no longer serves in truth and everything, um, a lot of positive changes will come our way. You know, I do feel like somebody may be unhappy about it because I did see the page of swords in reverse. I feel like somebody's going to be really unhappy about it. Possibly they could be very cutting, very mean, very immature with their words. You know, um, they could, you know, really try to paint a person to be, you know, terrible. But, um, hey, you know, some of us, we're going to have to just be ready to accept that. For others, the page of swords in reverse can mean someone is blocked, you know. All right. Or that maybe someone needs to be quiet about something and just do something. Okay. Just take strategic action. All right. The first card that came out for the tarot is the star. This is another card about healing. It's another card about, for me, I feel like an, this is another miracle-like card. Wish fulfillment. Answered mother freaking prayers. The sign of Aquarius is associated with this, okay? Some of you guys could literally have Leo in your 11th house, the sign, I mean, the house where Aquarius uh, is said to rule. Others of you could be, you could have Aquarius in your fifth house. The house where it is said that Leo dominates. Okay. I don't know why I feel that way, but it's possible. And Cancer is here as well, so... Mm -hmm. Some of you guys could have Leo moons and Aquarius moons and things like this, okay? It doesn't have to just be those. It could be any placements with these signs connected, all right? But yeah, I've got some wish fulfillment and some prayers here coming. Um, we also see the high priestess energy. I'm going to show that to you guys. The high priestess is all about, you know, being able to glean wisdom from our dreams, visions, our intuition, those gut feelings, um, and just whatever ways that we, that you're aware that spirit expresses themselves to you and gives you divine insight and wisdom and using that to navigate in this realm. Okay. Um, Oh, wow. <laughs> so in this particular deck, in this particular deck on this high priestess card, I'm seeing the letters J and B. J, B. So, mm -hmm. I, I, Jordan Baker. Something is connected to that. Also, um... Just some of you guys could be dealing, you guys, there's some, you guys could have initials of J and B in your name or one or the other. It doesn't have to be both, but it could be, okay? I know for me that these initials definitely resonate in some way, shape, or form. <clears throat> guys, wow, okay. Moving on to the next card. Also, before I move on, the high priestess energy is about receiving messages and insight from source that may not be clearly visible with the naked eye. You may have no proof of, you may have no evidence of what spirit has 
shown you or said to you other than your own recollection of something, okay? High Priestess energy definitely deals with dreams, visions, um, tarot card readings, runes, casting lots, divination in all its forms, the Bible, prayer, all that, okay? Also, the High Priestess is a servant of the people, so that could somehow be significant. Now, we have the Four of Swords showing up here. And so these two cards showed up together. So I'm going to read them together. Um, the Four of Swords and the Eight of Pentacles here. Four of Swords can be about resting or about being in solitude for the purpose of... Um, maybe kind of making sense of things. Sense of information, whatever. Uh, it could also be about separation, okay? Now, the Eight of Pentacles is about hard work. The Eight of Pentacles is about putting in effort, okay? So, it's possible that someone could be coming out of this energy of being separated, of being in solitude, being alone or away from each other, or on a break, Okay, um, I really literally I feel like for those who are going to resonate with this message, if there was a partner or a friend or a lover or all three of those things where at some point in time, you know, the conversation was had and it was said, hey, I think we need to take a break. Like literally that phrase, this could be connected to that. Okay, for some of you guys. Well, I'm feeling like it's possible that the break is about to be up or over, okay? And now it's about to be time to work, to grind, okay? Somebody could be ready to put in some type of, I'm hearing vigorous effort, okay? Now, the last two cards that came out are the Page of Pentacles in the reverse, and even the Ace of Swords, also in the reverse. Now, the Page of Pentacles can be, in reverse, I feel like it can be a card sometimes of breadcrumbing. It could also be just someone being immature in... In expressing themselves and their emotions or something or their feelings. I'm also feeling like this is a vibe of not giving all. Somebody wasn't giving all that they could have. And and um, there was deception there. Lies, falsities, falsehoods. If it's not that energy, it could literally be that the Page of Pentacles in the upright. So a new, something new starting. Um... Something that started new. Like, I just feel like there's going to, for this in the upright, it would be like a conversation that could have been had that brought clarity and it was the beginning of something or someone could have started like a new, uh, uh, picked up a new skill or a new line of study or something if it's about work or what have you. Take this information and apply it where it needs to go. But um, in the reverse, that would have already happened. Somebody could literally go into a new field of work or a new line of work. Someone could be getting a certification in something. Okay. Or someone is realizing that somebody has been lying about something the whole time, you know, acting like they were giving something, but they really were not. And all of that might be made clear as to why the person wasn't possibly with the sun card coming out. All right, this person could be somehow younger in age. All right. I also feel like somebody could come and there could be a conversation and um, I feel like they could make, they could clear some things up. Maybe part of the conversation will be something to the effect of I was young and immature. I did not understand A, B, C, and D. Okay, so it could indicate that somebody can say that, you know, I lied in the past about something. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead 
and clarify and then I'm going to let you guys go. But the way that I'm going to clarify is I'm just going to pull more cards from this deck and then I'll put them where I feel led to. So I've already shuffled this one off camera, but let me do it one more time. All right. Sorry that this is long, you guys. But I definitely hope that the details really help. Especially for those that it's meant to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's get it. So, thank you, Spirit. First card going um, with this star energy, we have the King of Wands. So, um... The King of Wands is about action. This is a person who's very attractive, um, confident in themselves, creative. Okay, so here's what it says. Keywords, big picture, a natural leader, overcoming challenges, mature, career focused, a leader, a visionary, and an entrepreneur. Here's what the advice position says. And I don't know, but for some people, I'm feeling like this could be someone tapping into their masculine energy. Here's what it says. Our lives are designed to bring us eventually to a place of, su of self-ownership. Indecision or doubt are not appropriate responses when clarity and confidence are critical. <laughs> I've literally said all of these words at least once in this reading. Okay. Are you... Oh, no, no. It says, as you take on a bigger role, it will begin to feel more comfortable. Seize the opportunity to influence events because everything is waiting for you. So with the star card, it makes me feel like, okay, the star card can also deal with, you know, someone, you know, fame. It can be an indicator of fame in some kind of way, even if it's like, um, you know, like lower level fame doesn't have to be worldwide, but it could be maybe in your city or in your group of, uh, uh, among your group of peers, in your profession, your line of work. Okay. But I feel like there's going to be some recognition. The star could also deal with social media and the performing arts. All right, let's get it. All right. I really kind of don't know where these cards are supposed to go. So I'm going to see. Oh, yeah. All right. So it's looking like the high priestess could have received some form of clarity and insight. Finally, she could be the one who's going to uh, um, suggest this, um, this need for separation, for solitude, for rest in some way, shape or form. Or he, the high priestess could also be a he energy as well. And it's because she's, I mean, she's going to be speaking some form of truth, okay? It could be a tower moment to someone with the tower card here. So that's that Uranus energy. It's going to be a shocking revelation, possibly. The shock could also be that somebody is going to be coming out of this this break, like I said, some of you guys, somebody's coming out of a break with you. You and this person are going to be coming out of a break. I also feel that in some way, this person is going to help you. He's go he or she is going to help you provide for yourself or they're going to be a provider. Okay. They could be an entrepreneur in their own right or you guys could come together and you create some type of program or some type of... Uh, A business together where you guys both work it okay let's go ahead and under get an understanding of these it says success a sharp mind breakthroughs new ideas a new conflict surgery and mental clarity okay and all of these could apply somehow. Some of you guys could literally be going into surgery. You might receive word that your surgery has been approved or your insurance is going to pay for something that, you know, could have been causing some type of 
pain maybe or even anxiety and now receiving your breakthrough or the word about the surgery coming through could provide some form of success or relief for you the tower card here's the key words for it release yeah chaos disaster awakening upheaval revelation sudden change and sudden insight The key words for this King of Pentacles energy is leadership, abundance, wealth, business, discipline, prosperity, generosity, and security. For some of you guys, you could have been in a place where you were codependent upon other people and upon someone else to help provide for you. Whereas to now the clarity that you're going to receive, like I'm really feeling like some of us are going to receive an opportunity that is very much so in alignment with who we are and what we are supposed to be doing. And this is also part of the miracle because we were calling in a way to support ourselves and it's about to come. Okay, it's about to come. And now the person who maybe you were depending on before because you didn't have the confidence within yourself that you needed. Um, it's just like, like, I just feel like you're being set up in a good way by source, by spirit. So some of you guys could literally be, I don't want to say it like handed, but you are being set up in a good way for a position or for an opportunity that is going to be very much so in alignment with your skill sets, what you're able to do. And it's going to really set you up in a way to where you don't have to depend upon someone else to have your bare necessities met and also creating the aesthetic and lifestyle that you want. Okay. All right. So that's that with that. Let's get some more cards. Here we go. Yeah, man. Look at this. Some beautiful energy showing up, guys. Uh, the sun card coming out again. Heavy on the Leo energy. Heavy on the clarity and success. Let's read it. It says keywords. All is well. Celebration, success, happiness, vitality, fun, warmth, positivity, pleasure, rebirth, and joy. Like, I literally feel like somebody is getting their power back. And if you've never been in the energy of this sun and the vibe that I feel like it's giving, it's someone who is assured of themselves. Somebody who is confident in their abilities to make shit shape to make things happen for themselves in the way that benefits them that they feel is most authentic and in alignment with who they are and that is successful that 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 is great news you guys it's great news you know i feel like for some of you guys with this page of pentacles and this ace of swords in reverse i feel like some of us and i have to speak for myself so this could just be for me but you know if you resonate, cool. Be sure to put it in the comments. But I'll say this. I feel like some of us were trying to start new um, endeavors, trying to pick up new skill sets. And um, we were moving in a way that was out of alignment for us, okay? I feel that it was inauthentic to who we are. And so if you don't get the job or if you don't get the thing, it's because it wasn't meant for you because there was some aspect of it that wasn't true. It was inauthentic. Okay, so I just want to say that that was another understanding I was getting of this page of Pentacles in reverse and the, the Ace of Swords in reverse, okay? I have the page of Swords now in the upright. Here's what it says. Keywords, restless, new ideas, a thirst for knowledge, mental energy, new ways of communicating, and curiosity. I feel like, you know, you guys can expect a conversation to get ready to happen. <laughs> Excuse me. I even feel that if this is in, as far as it relates to a relationship like love or family or however, I think that, oh, and I definitely feel the need to say this, so I'm going to say it. I believe that somebody is going to 
have some type of awakening. I don't know if it's going to be because of a conversation or because of somebody's behavior and actions towards them or the lack thereof, but somebody's going to have an epiphany in a, in a connection and the way that they used to communicate, which really was tragic and, and not so good, the ways they used to behave in the connection, that is going to be eradicated because somehow they're going to understand, you know, that they really strongly desire this person in their life. And um, I don't feel like it's going to be a codependent type thing. I just feel like this somebody is going to be very aware of the value that somebody brings. Okay. Someone has been, someone has helped this person heal. All right. And they may be on the verge of losing the person because they can't, they, for whatever reason, weren't appreciating them or couldn't see their value, but something is going to shift and change. Okay. I feel like somebody was acting as if they did not know the value of someone, like they didn't know what they had and something is going to happen. That's going to shift that shit and shake that all the way up to the point to where all of a sudden somebody's going to get it together and they're going to real like, Oh, I already knew I was lying when I acted like I didn't know what it was. I know that's stupid, but whatever. I feel like the way that they communicate, the way that they handle this person is all going to change. That may not be everybody's scenario, but it's someone's, okay? With the page of swords in the upright. And last but not least, we have the two of cups, guys. We got a lot of twos on here. Not a lot. I'm lying. I accidentally said that. But it's because I've just been seeing two, two, two. Some of you guys could also see sevens. I see the number 43 here. You could also see six and the number 10. Let's go ahead and read what this talks about, okay? The two of cups talks about marriage unified love mutual attraction proposal connection and partnership so i wouldn't be surprised if somebody <laughs> if somebody comes back in and they get a proposal like this is a love thing for me you guys and to be quite honest i feel like this energy has it was over some years this doesn't feel like some stuff that happens all of a sudden this is giving this connection but it could don't please don't it doesn't mean it didn't but the vibe i'm feeling is something that did exist um at a time previous and it was separated and it feels like it's going to come back together and it's going to be a miracle because I mean, I just kind of feel like somebody didn't think that this was going to even happen. I feel someone thought that there was nothing and some things are about to be revealed, baby. Okay. At the bottom of the deck, I'm seeing the four of pentacles, the eight of wands and the eight of pentacles. The number eight was also here. We've got three eights out on the table. Okay. Let's get the four of pentacles. Let's see what it says. Keywords, scarcity or control, security, conversation, or sorry, conservation, saving money and frugality. Mm -hmm. The eight of wands, manifesting quickly, speed, rapid action, movement. Air travel, swift change, quick decisions. Didn't I tell y'all? Like, this is giving me that somebody was holding the fuck back. Somebody was being stingy as fuck. And it could be with their feelings. It could be with their resources. It could be with their money, their actions. I don't care. But whatever could be felt and tangible, whatever could actually be done, somebody wasn't fucking doing that shit. They were holding the fuck back. And as a direct result, this is the reason why all this stuff that is either about to happen or will have already happened. It's why it happened. And all of a sudden, like I just described with this tower card, I just said this. I feel like somebody is going to realize like, oh, okay, I realized I wasn't giving all that I could have been giving. I don't know what's going to happen. That's it, Maybe the talk of uh, separation or just somebody pulling their energy back because that could also be what the damn four of swords is about. Someone is going to be given the instructions to shut up and pull your energy back. And it's going to happen and somebody's going to feel it and they're going to be like, oh shit. And I feel like they're all of a sudden going to quickly change. And it may not really be quickly, but I do feel like something's going to happen faster than maybe what it would have if they were unaware. Okay. 
And then they're going to be ready to put in all the work and the fucking effort. Someone could have Taurus in their energy, a Taurus moon or sun for that matter. Or Neptune or Uranus or Mars, okay? Any other placements that I have here and even any other other ones. They could also be a sun, Taurus. They could also be a Capricorn, Virgo. Leo, Sagittarius, Aries energy is up in here. And also they could have some Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius somewhere in their chart. Heavy on the Scorpio energy as well. But they're going to be ready to put in real ass work. Okay. All right. That has been the reading. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Peace, love, light, and darkness, which all work together to bring balance and harmony. First within ourselves. And then within our world, it's my pleasure to serve you this way. If you're new to the channel and you haven't clicked subscribe, go ahead and hit the button. Um, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any time that I go either live or that I post. And if you have been with me, guys, thank you so much for coming back. And yeah, comment below how this made sense to you, if it did at all. Okay, bye.